Hello my friends, welcome to part three of the Mermaid Journal. Well, I am just having so much fun making this journal and it it's just, it's coming together so nicely and it's smaller in size as you guys know and it's just getting packed full of goodness and I am absolutely loving it. So I am so glad that you joined me today. I really truly do appreciate that. And um, I guess just let's get to work. After some thought and deliberation, <laughs> I've decided that since I don't have a cover for this journal yet, we're gonna go ahead and do the pockets first, which is what I usually do. I usually make my cover after I've done the inside of the journals. And I know a lot of people do it the opposite way, and there's absolutely no right or wrong answer. The reason that I do it this way is because the journal can sort of morph, right, and take on a life of its own. And I like my cover to reflect what's going on on the inside. And as I'm creating, I don't like to feel pigeonholed into having to stay to, let's say if the cover was done, I don't want to have to stay with the feeling of whatever I was feeling in that moment when I created that cover. It might have changed in, in the few days or something. So I like to do the inside because that's the majority of the book and then I do the cover at the end, usually. Now that's usually, not all the time. So uh, let's see, I think I would like this to be the first signature. I'm feeling a little partial to this one. So let's just take a good look at it here. Let's just look at it and see if something strikes us and nothing strikes me here. So I'm just going to skip that. <laughs> now, I definitely feel struck here because I really have to cover that. I do not like that. So that's great. It gives us a reason to get started and have a fun time. So I have all this scrap that I had cut off the 12 by 12s. So we're going to pick something that, you know, works well with it. And so let's take a look and we want it to, I work very closely with my you know, the pages that go next to it. I usually keep all this sort of close by as I'm creating and I'm loving the way that that looks actually. So let's, let's, I think we're gonna go with that, but I'll pop these down. Too much purple. Nah, nope. Hmm. The first one is the one. Okay. So I'm thinking, you know, at first I was thinking, oh, let me do a uh, a pocket to co cover that but I think I don't want to do that now I think now I'm feeling inspired to let me find the center here feeling inspired to put this centered in here but just glued at the top so you can lift this up still and write on it and then I'm gonna go and add more writing paper over top of that so that's how we're gonna start this journal my friends so instead of marking every time, I just take it, put my finger where I want it, I bend it, and then I know where to cut it. Leaving a little bit of room up here in case I wanna make a decorative piece with say fabric or something like that feel like that's on there just a little bit crooked. Okay, there we go. Now I have this little book and I'm just using it to harvest papers from. So I could do that. Oops, the date actually is right up there at the top. Let's see if I folded it. Yeah, it might look weird. So I could start like that though. I just cut this end off right here. I don't really like to start embellishing right away. However, that being said, I surround myself with my embellishments so that as I'm working, if I am struck, I can just grab what I want and do some embellishing. It might not be the final embellishing, obviously, but 
you know, might be something. And so as I was sitting here, I'm, I'm mentioning that because as I was sitting here working, I found my doily and I thought, hey, I could. And what would happen if I did it over? Yeah, I like that. Let's, let's go over both sides with it. I think that's super cute. We're going to start by folding it in half. And the next thing we're going to do is add some glue. I sort of want it centered. Yeah, I like that. Okay. And then we can come back and do some little embellishments on top of the doily. I think that's super pretty. And it adds a little something to the page. All right, moving on to the next. So over here, I'm feeling like maybe we put a side pocket, or we could do we could do a belly band, but then it covers the the tail. But we could do like a nice little side pocket right here. Yeah, how about that? Let's do that. So we've got some of this that we can work with. Hmm, I don't know if I love that though, honestly. Let's, let's, let me look for some other scraps. I have this nice dark blue solid piece and it is really intense. And I kind of like the punch of intensity that it is because it goes, you know, with the depth of this. So I think we're gonna do that. I'm gonna mark it with my fingernail so I know where to cut that. Now we are getting into the groove of it, you guys. So I don't tell you guys this kind of stuff very often, but when I'm in here crafting, and if I'm not crafting along with another creator's videos, which I do do that frequently, but not always when I'm recording, obviously, but sometimes actually, but not usually. At any rate, what I'm trying to say is uh, my usual craft setup is, of course, got my camera going, I'm doing my thing, and I usually have my music on, my dance music. I either listen to some dance music, music from the 1980s, sometimes music from the 90s, sometimes disco. I like to mix it up, keeps it fresh, gives me energy and um, it helps my imagination just really, you know, flow. And so when I am not recording, I have my music going and it's a lot of fun. And maybe someday I'll do sort of a vlog type video and um, maybe position the camera a little bit differently just so you can kind of see the big picture of how I create because this is this is not the big picture of how I create. This is the little picture of how I create. This is like the zoomed in, <laughs> you know, picture of how I create. So at any rate, I just figured I would share that with you guys. It is typically a very good time when I'm in here and doing my thing and making my beautiful creations and have my music on and it's just, I love it so much, and, um, you know, it's just a great, great way to spend, spend my time. Also, sometimes, like, if I need, like, a stress reliever, I will do that, and I just come in here and get my stuff out, turn my music on, and just go to town, and I love it. I love it so much. So we have a little bit of a fray napkin right here. I'm going to clean that up. All right, and there's that. Tags and stuff, you know, well, that'll come later. We're just sort of getting the basics in. This we will definitely add something onto the front. I don't know that I want to do that right now. I think I want to decide on this. I think this should either be a belly band or a long side pocket. So let's take a look at some of the options. Now I have this piece, remember this was an album cover and it is vintage. Well, obviously if it's an album cover, it's vintage. Um, it's pretty cool 
and I could use that so if I cut it here you know it would look something like that that's pretty neat you know guys I'm thinking maybe let's go for it let's go for it it's thick and heavy I mean it's not like too thick or too heavy and this paper is strong anyway so that's not going to matter too much let's go ahead and do it let's cut it here let's get the bird into it and there we go and we still have some left to use elsewhere now we know it's too tall so I'm gonna take off the words that are at the top I think I am let's take a look here let's this is what we're gonna need to so yeah because I definitely want some of the ocean water in it you know so and I definitely want the bird in it so let's go ahead and cut right above the bird okay and then now let's measure to see what else okay now this one is well actually I probably could mark it with my finger yeah we got it well, this edge is a little rough but that's okay that's part of junk journaling we we don't always use you know brand new things as a matter of fact for those of you who don't know true junk journaling is things that were discarded or are were getting ready to be discarded not new items so to be honest with you guys uh, most of us use the word junk journal inappropriately because the fact is most of us create journals with a combination of old and new and that's what I do is I use a combination of old and new um, most of the stuff I use is old but like if I use a kit and I've printed it out on new paper then that's new maybe I should get into the habit of printing the kits out on old paper uh, because a lot of times I print it out on scrapbook paper or either scrapbook paper or um, you know just regular copy paper so if I can find older paper that's not too old, like you want to have integrity in the paper, obviously. So it couldn't just be like one time I printed it out on some of the pages out on antique. I'm sorry, not antique, but vintage music paper. Oh, and it was delightful. But I, I didn't do the whole kit that way because, you know, that paper's you know, by the time it gets old, it's in a pretty fragile state. So, but anyway, not that you have to use old stuff. So junk journaling doesn't necessarily mean old. It can mean stuff that you grabbed out of your recycling bin. So it was new, maybe it was in your mailbox, but you were gonna, you know, get rid of it, but you decided to create with it. And that way you can use stuff that is not old and won't come apart too easily all right so there we go so we have a side pocket there this one let's wait on it i'm not feeling inspired but i do know we're going to do something with it but just not right now and we know that whatever we do you know we'll end up putting a paper or a tag up here and here we are in the next page so pretty i absolutely love that paper so what do we want to do here hmm, let's do let's do an upper pocket because we have one down here. So let's go ahead and do an upper. One of you lovely people sent me this and I apologize. I cannot remember who it was, but it's gorgeous. It came from a daily weekly planner and I say, let's go ahead and use a piece of this for this corner. This one's a little bit thinner than this one. This one's quite a bit more hardy. Ooh, what pretty tags these will make. Well, okay, I'm feeling inspired. <laughs> so bear with me <laughs> while I cut these for tags. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, these are going to be super. I'm just going to eyeball it to a size that I think would be nice. Remember, our journal isn't huge, so we're not going to have huge tags. So there's that one. Let's cut. Let me get my razor. Do I want to do a razor with this? I think I do. There we 
go. Yeah, that's a nice size tag. All right, so if we do the same on this side, then we'll have a center one with this little thing in it, which is kind of cool. So we have four squares here, so we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and we're gonna go on the outside of that. Just wanna make sure I sort of get that right. Perfect, okay, so now we have these wonderful tags and then this piece which can be built into something. So there's a little fray here, so I'm gonna take that off. Okay, so let's just set these guys aside. <laughs> So now we have some tags. Actually, I'm gonna put them up in my piles. I have my piles over here of all the tags that I'm gonna stuff these with, so I'm just gonna put that up there. All right, so let's get back to using this as an upper pocket, right? So let's decide where we wanna, let's preserve the mermaid. Let's just leave, we're gonna cut between the mermaid and the seahorse. Okay, and let's go ahead, deciding if I want to do anything with this or not. And you know, it's interesting, so maybe I do. So let's see how long would this be. It's a little bit much though, because um, I, I, I don't like the corner pockets to be too long. So we're gonna go ahead and cut them off so that everything fits nicer. Trying to keep these in order. Okay. Oh, I really like the way this looks together. This is just fun. I think this is light enough that it could be written on. So I don't think I'm gonna add anything to it. Uh, I like, I would like Susan to be able to either add a photo or writing or whatever she wants to here. So I'm just gonna leave that as is. All right, then we've got this, and uh, we could do some sort of little flip here. Well, remember this, that was gonna be a tag. Why can't we make it into a flip? I think that would be really neat. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, friends, I found this swatch here. I found this at the um, thrift store. Either that or this was a piece that my friend Carol of California gave me, but I think this is one of the ones that I found at the thrift store. At any rate, how perfect is it for a beach journal? Just those stripes and everything, or a mermaid I should say, but the stripes and everything really remind me so much of the, you know, something that you might see on the beach. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that to size and we're gonna use it as our hinge. I'm gonna see if I can get the paper off of the back. Let's see, because it's not gonna be very flexible with the paper on it. Okay, it's really glued on there and I'm not gonna be able to get it off. So, I might just turn this into a tag. I might do that. Let's find a different piece of paper for the thing, because see, it's not gonna, I mean, it does bend. I just don't think it's gonna be flexible enough. It would rather be open, I think. So let me go look around. I have some of this, and I think this might work great. So I'm gonna get my three-in-one. I've probably mentioned this to you guys. I usually use Fabri-Tac, but the three-in-one actually is less expensive, so I've been using that because I think maybe even I found it on sale. I can't quite remember, but I do remember that it was less expensive than the Fabri-Tac. And it's made by the same company, and it seems to be the same 
everything basically. It even has the same smell and texture and all of that. So if I can save a few bucks here and there, that certainly does help. All right, so if this is gonna be here, then the rest needs to go on the inside. That's great, that's a nice little flip open. And then, you know, if we wanna do something more to this side, we can. All right, now we had put these on for what is under it to dry, so I'm gonna remove those. So a page like this, it can't really be written on unless I cover it with paper. So that's our choice right now. Let's say we're flipping through. We've got a writing space here, writing space here. We've got a pocket for a tag here. We have a pocket here and here and then here. Mm. Uh, then this could be written on as is. We've got our flap here, which will make decisions about the future of that. We have this. So yeah, let's turn this into a definite writing space, okay? All right, I have some of this, as you guys know. So let's go ahead and get our trimmer and we will trim that down to size. And this is together, so what I might do is trim this side and that way it can be opened and written on for a second page. So let's do that. I'm gonna to try to leave the space for the date there, but still take off as much as I can so it'll fit properly. And we might need to, that's looking good, might need to take some off the bottom, so right about here. All right, let's see how that's gonna fit. Yep, that looks great. decided that this is going to be our, uh, our center spread and I don't want to commit to doing anything to that right now so we're going to skip it. All right let me take a look at some of the goodies I have here from you guys. All right my friends I went through some of our goodies and I think I'd like to work with this bag and this gorgeous mermaid. So let's go ahead and glue this in place first. All right, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to adhere her right here to this page. She's gonna fit perfectly and we won't have to worry about her hair being in the way of the bag because it's just right there on the edge. So I think, and I just want to make sure that the page will open and close. Yeah, because I don't want to hurt her tail. All right, I think that's going to work out great. I had put a little piece of tape there to hold it together. Her tail, it's a, it's a small connection there and it was a little bit loose, but once we glue her down, it's going to be perfectly fine. is we're going to take our clothespins and we're going to go ahead and open this up like this so that we can get as many on there as possible. All right, let's use some of this to cover all of that because the credit card looks kind of cool, but I don't think the writing necessarily looks very cool. So we will go ahead and use some of this. I'm gonna fold it here so I know where to cut it. Now when I'm covering paper with other paper, 
I like to give a little bit of breathing room, especially in the seam. So I will not put it up to the seam. Napkins I don't mind putting up to the seam, but paper's too thick and it starts to buckle. And I, so I just avoid doing that. That looks so pretty. What beautiful paper. Love it. And then I thought what we might do is take this. I need to trim it a little bit. But take that and create a pocket. It's kind of a small pocket though, isn't it? Hmm. I could turn it into a flip. Let's see. Maybe, maybe let's make it actually a really small pocket. Hold on. Let's make it a small pocket and then we'll put one of these mermaid tails in it. How does that sound? And this has a little thing so we could actually tuck the mermaid tail in uh, this way and put like a little string on it or something. So let me find a small piece of ephemera that we can use. Here's one and it has an octopus on it which I love. Let me see if this is a, this looks like it might actually be an upper. So well, let's think this through here. We could do an upper right here. It fits perfectly. And then we could, will that one work? We might have to do just a regular tag, but that's kind of cool. Let's do that. I think this one will work. I'm not going to put it up in there too far because I don't want it to get into the glue. So we're going to let the glue dry, but I'm just putting it there carefully so that I don't forget that that's what I want to use there. Now let's bring her back over and let's go ahead. The glue should be dry so we can take these off now. Well, that is very nice together, I think. Yeah, that looks great. All right, so again, I'm not gonna shove that in there. We're gonna let that dry. Oh, and then this is plain and horrible. So let's go ahead and think about what we want to go here. We've got some scrap paper. We could use some of that. That looks nice. And then we've got this gold which is pretty intense, but I like the fact that it goes with this gold over here. So let's go ahead and use some of that. Let's see. Yeah, I wanna go tall with it. And there actually might be a little bit of a glare on you guys, and I apologize if there is. Get your sunglasses on for this part of the video. All right, which one did I cut? It must have been this one for, yeah, that fits, okay. Now we are going to need to take off. I think we can use this little starfish and make it into a small pocket. Just for like a small little either tag or ticket, something like that. So we are only gluing down, which part are we gluing down? Let's see. We're just gluing down, no, I can't remember. I think just this part and then the rest of it will hold a ticket. going to put this here just to make sure it holds down until it dries. All right. Now, moving on, let's leave her page blank cuz I'm not sure what I want to do there. But over here we have some fun choices and I was thinking we might want to grab one of these gorgeous tags. Actually, let me see if this is too big for in this pocket. It is cuz of the tail. So let's let's make a band 
maybe a side pocket for this beautiful tag. I think that would look lovely. Okay, so while this is drying, we can just move it out of the way and close that. And then we can, so beautiful, Rosie, Rosie's Creative Wings made that. So sweet, I love it. So let's go ahead and do like a little side pocket because I think it'll fit in there perfectly. I think this piece will look, work nice and I can just put it here in the corner and then this can tuck right here. I think it's perfect. And I'll make sure I don't put too much glue because I don't want this tail to be too close to the seam, but if I can just get the glue right on the edge, I think it'll be great. So what we'll do, because we don't want to stuff this tag in, we'll just lay it here because we know that that's what we, you know, we want to reserve it for that spot. So let's think about this. Let's see if we've got something that we think will fit inside. Actually, I'm looking here at my goodies that you guys sent me. And let's, <laughs> let's take a look and see what happens. If we stuff this in here, oh, that's just too fun. It's gonna stick out of the top, but I don't care. I think that's fabulous. So we'll definitely do that. And then part of me almost wants to do two of them so you see it from both sides, but we won't for now. I can always co cover the top of that with some material and then the bottom can be written on, right? So let's, let's pretend we're gonna do that. I love it, that looks so great. I'm trying to get the second signature out of the way, it's kind of in my way over there. Okay, now, uh, how do we wanna decorate this, this thing? Ooh, okay, so what we could do is we could use uh, one of these. I'm trying to see if the big one's gonna fit on here, but I don't, well, hold on. All right, the, the bottom would be here. But no, we have that trim in there, so that she won't work, but this one will work great. So we're definitely gonna to wanna to create um, like a little scene or something like that. And then maybe she's under it. As I've mentioned, I don't always decorate everything, but if I feel inspired in a moment, I will. So this is just one of those moments. So I think what we're gonna go ahead and do is add some lace here. So I need to cut it right here. Now I think I'd like to create a little scene. So I'm gonna use this medium size uh, mermaid and stick her down and then I'm going to use the seaweed around her. I'm just using my um, three-in-one to attach the seaweed. I thought for some reason it might be better to use the three-in-one as opposed to my, what do I usually use? Aileen's tacky glue. Uh, just because they're sort of a vellum material and the other one might have worked too, perfectly fine, but just sort of my gut instinct went with that. Well, now I'd like to add just a nice little piece of this gorgeous teal lacy material that I have. That was also given to me in Happy Mail, by the way. And using the three-in-one for that, just just sort of like a, it looks like a seagrass is, is my feeling on that. Just bunching that around and then the, the seaweed sort of coming up under it and then the mermaid is kind of relaxing within it. So that's my little scene for this pocket. Right, we have flipped the page over and I've decided to create just a very simple pocket on this page that has the fish scales on it I should say mermaid scales just adding this 
piece of ephemera basically, turning it into a pocket. And then that tag that Rosie gave me, that is gonna slide right inside of it. Over here, we have this little blue pocket. It's such a nice, intense blue. And of course, I don't wanna leave it plain. So we're gonna take some of this blue sparkly, it's almost like tulle material, and we're gonna add some of that to the corner. I'm not quite sure what else I'm gonna do. I think maybe I'm gonna use this piece of ephemera and sort of tuck it underneath the sparkly material, and that will be sort of popping out from underneath it. I'm gonna be happy with that, uh, like that, but I, as you can see, I'm adding a little bit of fabric right there, and that's just to keep the glue that I got on that ephemera from sticking to anything underneath it. I, I don't want that to happen while it's drying. So actually, I'm switching that fabric out for this piece of scrap paper. I'd rather the glue get stuck to that scrap paper than anything else on that page. Here we are on the other side of this pocket that we created together out of that big envelope. And I'm using this beautiful piece that was given to me and I absolutely love this piece. So I'm putting it on the pocket as a base. I've decided to use a piece of ephemera that came in the scrapbook kit and this is a jellyfish and we are just gonna pop that right over top. Have you ever been stung by a jellyfish by chance? Well, I have several times actually, but the worst one was when I was about four or five years old, maybe I was five, and I was in Virginia, and me and my sister both got stung, and it was one of those like man of war jellyfish, and they are horrible when they sting you. It, it, uh, it's really even hard to explain what it felt like. It sort of felt like lightning. Um, although I don't know what lightning feels like, I only can just imagine. But then uh, I didn't get stung by any more jellyfish up until maybe 15 years ago and I got stung by one, but it wasn't terrible. So I didn't even need to put anything on it that wasn't that big of a deal and then when i used to train for triathlons i used to go swimming open water swimming in the in the ocean um, every week and during the springtime here in clearwater uh, the little jellies come out but they were the kind that don't really hurt you they don't really sting you might feel like a little i don't know just a little something but it's not really a sting and they're just these cute little jellies and they come out and when you're swimming you're just like swimming through them and sometimes like during the springtime there's so many and i can remember them being like on my head and you know on my arms and like as i'm swimming through them and it was just crazy but thankfully those were nothing to be scared of have finished working on this phase of the first signature now let's go ahead and start on the second signature so you guys know I am not a fan of this pattern but look what my friend gave me so I think that really helps to solve my personal issue with this so I think what we'll do is this can be a flip so we'll add a little bit of notebook paper underneath and then we'll put this on top
I used my tacky glue to glue the paper, but the beautiful blue piece of paper, it almost has a fabric feeling. Like, um, you know how handmade paper feels? It's just got a lot of texture to it. Well, that's how this blue feels. So I'm going to use the three-in-one to make sure that that stays on there perfectly. I feel like it definitely needs something extra. And I have this gorgeous ruffle in my stash that was sent to me in happy mail i believe and i think it's going to be perfect i love that we are combining all sorts of different shades of blue i just i just love that so much so it's it leans more teal and then in the center of that we're going to go ahead and put a piece of ephemera that was sent to me by jackie and friends, I keep calling her Jackie. Her name is Jacqueline. I don't even know if she goes by Jackie. I don't know why I keep doing that. Um, <laughs> she and I are new to each other, so I don't actually know if she goes by Jackie or not. And it, it you know, some people don't like nicknames, all this, that, and the other. So um, sorry, Jacqueline, <laughs> that I keep calling you Jackie. this on as a pocket and then I decorated this little round piece this tag just went ahead and layered it up and oops can you see oh my lights a little bright hold on a second let's get a readjustment here and then <laughs> no I feel like it's not bright enough there we go let's try it like that anyway there it is I think it's so super cute and put my light back where it was now Whew blinding me there we go all right so that's gonna fit right there we are flipping through to see what we want to do here now I don't really want to cover this whole thing so I could do an upper pocket on this or I could do a paper that you could flip up and then be able to see it but I'm sort of inclined to do an upper right here so I was toying with the idea of turning this tail into a little tuck spot and if I did it right here I could do the glue right on the edges and then and actually right on the top here and then hopefully it would be enough to be able to tuck something light oh and then you know what if we do that I could do a little tab over here somewhere and it wouldn't cover up the entire image and then it pulls some of the blue over from this side so I'm thinking, let's just have a little fun with it and let's try that out. So I need to, I need to know exactly where I'm gonna put the glue on. So if I'm looking at it, I have to remember about midway on this tail, uh, just the very top of this part and then just down the edge. So midway on this tail, so let's say right about here. Uh -oh, I'm getting low on glue, you guys. I always have a spare bottle, but getting down to the bottom. Okay, so that's midway there. Let's do the top here. And then it was down this edge. So let's do it right here, like that. And let's see how that does for us. Oops, my bottle top ended up way over here. <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking what I'll do hold this like this so we can see where the glue is. I'm going to take the tag out because it's got a little weight to it. We're going to take this and I want to put this right on the edge. All right, now let's flip it back because we can move it while it's wet. All right, we're going to try that out and hopefully that'll work out for us. Now, this page curved a little bit just because it got wet from adhering this to it. So this one's definitely going to have to go under a book. Speaking of, hold on, let me get this glue off my fingers. Speaking of that sort of thing, actually, let me get my clothespins on here before I go on telling you. 
and showing you what I did. Get this on here. Want this to dry, obviously. All right, that should hold it. Actually, I see a little spot where it's. I don't think I put glue in this particular spot right here, but we're going to go ahead and push that down. And actually, I think I put some down here. So let's just just make sure we got all the important parts covered here. Hopefully this is going to be a fun little uh, tag for us. All right, so I just wanted to show you this, guys. Speaking of putting something under a book, I put this whole thing under a book last night, and look how, look how it straightened it out. It's just fantastic. So that's what I'll do with this one. When I'm done with it, I'll pop it under a book, and it'll straighten everything out, and we won't have to worry about the bending pages. So I'm looking at this, and I'm wondering... You know, because it's got a curve, I think maybe a round tag would fit in, plus that wouldn't take up too much space. It's lightweight. I don't even need to decorate it because it's already got perfect image on it. If I want to, I could put some of uh, the words on it that Carol sent me. But we can start out like this, and as we go through the journal with the words, then if we have a spare, we can add that to it. But otherwise, I think we'll just plan on that. So I'm gonna just leave that there so that I know it's reserved for that spot. All right, what are we going to do over here? All right, so right here, I decided to do something sort of fun. Well, I think it's fun. I had some old ephemera, it's vintage, and I had it in my stash. It was sent to me in happy mail, and I love it, and I've been holding on to it for just the perfect thing, and I think this mermaid journal is the perfect thing. Well, I'm going to attach these as fl flips. Uh, I was gonna say tag flips, but I don't know. They're, they're ephemera flips. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to attach them with this beautiful blue fabric that I have, and that way, uh, once attached, you'll be able to flip the cards up. You can write on the back of them, uh, you can also write on the paper that's underneath of them, and they're just a nice splash of color. All right, my friends, this is going to conclude this video. I know that the process videos for this mermaid series were long, and I had a choice. It was to divide them up and have more videos, or to just really you know, sink in deep and have a couple of long ones. And because I've got two design team projects coming up and they, I got to get those done by the end of the month, I decided to combine some videos and just have them be longer. So that's the deal. But at any rate, I'm sharing that to say this is the end of this video and the next video is going to be the flip through of this journal. Thanks for watching. See you soon.